Let us talk about the chemogenetic theory in detail. So this chemogenetic theory, which is also known as the modern theory or modern theory of evolution. Let us talk about this theory in detail. This theory is divided into three parts. The first part is known as chemogeny. Chemogeny. Second part is biogeny. And the third part is known as cogenogeny. Let us talk about what exactly we mean by these three parts. Chemogeny means the chemical evolution. Biogeny means biomolecule formation where the first organic molecules which could replicate on their own they were formed and cogenogeny means the first life form formation and its evolution. So this is how this modern theory was divided into three parts. Now this chemogeny, that is the chemical evolution theory, this was explained by Operin and Helden. According to Operin and Helden, what existed in or on earth at the time of origin of life were certain conditions and the conditions were that there were there was high temperature the temperature was around 800 degrees or around that temperature very high energy was in two forms one was uv rays and second was in the form of lightning After this, there were torrential rains and torrential rains means when it rains for a very, very long period of time, maybe years continuously and that resulted in formation of huge water bodies where these minerals and sub substances dissolved in it and that was called broth. So broth formation took place. Because initially when the temperature was high, all that water was present in the form of water vapor. As it started to cool down and the temperature came below 100, it started raining and that liquid water, which had all those things dissolved, formed broth. Then the gases in the atmosphere which were present were ammonia, methane, carbon dioxide, hydrogen and helium. Water vapor was also available but there was no molecular oxygen. So at that time when life originated this was the chemical change or the conditions which were existing. Now chemical evolution says in presence of this energy. Certain molecules or certain compounds must have reacted to form some bigger molecules and that resulted in the formation of the molecules which could replicate. So in case of chemical evolution, some simple, some simple chemical compounds were formed. Which chemical compounds like sugars, aldehyde, nitrogen bases which we now know as purines and pyrimidines. These were the substances which were formed. Fatty acids. So what Operin and Helden said that at the time when life originated, what chemical changes must have taken place were 
according to him the temperature was very high initially around 800 degrees then it started to cool down energy was available in two forms as ultraviolet radiations and lightning which must have helped in all these chemical reaction resulting in formation of these simple compounds because of torrential rains it resulted in broth formation broth means there was water and in which all the substances were available or dissolved the gases which were there in the atmosphere were mainly these no molecular oxygen was there so at that time the atmosphere was reducing that means no molecular oxygen was there and everything which must have taken place were anaerobic condition reactions which resulted in formation of these simple chemical compounds now after these compounds were formed which said or which meant the chemical evolution started the next thing that is the biogeny or evolution in terms of molecules which were able to replicate so what happened in this particular part some of these molecules must have aggregated again the reactions are continuously going on or probably were going on and they must have reacted to form a little complex molecule the complex molecules complex biomolecules were formed and how were they probably formed some molecule like dna must have formed which would have given rise to rna and rna would have produced the proteins which this expression which we now know as central dogma must have taken place this is what they believed that this is how biological or molecules or biomolecules must have formed some molecules which were able to replicate on their own and here the complex molecules include included dna or rna type of molecules after this when the life actually originated what must have happened here so in case of co genogeny what the scientists believe is these proteins plus the broth that means all the substances dissolved in that water must have formed some aggregate these aggregates or aggregate molecules were called protobionts these were the first aggregates of these biomolecules which were believed to be formed the only thing was these aggregates did not show reproduction so they did not reproduce later on when the same thing continued the next life form which formed from this protobionts or actually the first life form was called eobiont or which are similar to coacervates and these coacervates actually reproduced by budding so they reproduced by budding and when they reproduced that means the first basic uh, biological property was exhibited by them that is reproduction so when we talk of the first life form originated we use either eobionts or coacervates as the first living form now the first living organisms which existed or which originated like coacervates they must have been so now we are talking of these coacervates at that time there was no molecular oxygen so it is believed that the first forms they were actually chemoheterotrophs chemo heterotrophs that means they used chemicals and obtained energy after that now when they were able to use the light energy they were called chemo phototrophs and when they were using chemicals in presence of sunlight 
they were able to synthesize their food, but they used chemicals. Then they were anaerobic, chemo, autotrophs. Anaerobic means they did not use oxygen or rather carbon dioxide and released oxygen. And here the photosynthesis which they performed was anoxygenic. That means there was no oxygen released because they were not using carbon dioxide or they were using some other kind of animal, uh, chemicals. So here we use sulfur bacteria, iron bacteria, they probably would have come in this category. And then came the aerobic organisms. Aerobic organisms developed certain pigments like chlorophyll. In earlier forms, they were bacteriochlorophyll. They must have used that bacteriochlorophyll to trap the energy from sun and must have used water and that is why they released oxygen in the atmosphere. So that's a, that is when this aerobic or these aerobic organisms actually came into existence and the first one which was or which is believed to be the aerobic organism is our cyanobacteria. So this is how the life actually originated according to chemogenetic theory.